Greetings, Dave Dickinson here uh, at Astro Guys on Twitter and freelance science writer for Universe Today Sky and Telescope and author of our new Deep Sky Field Guide. That's not here, what I'm here to talk to you about today. I'm here to talk to you about a new telescope that I've been using. Uh, it's is from Unistellar. This is an EV scope and this is totally smartphone controlled. And this is one of the neatest little toys I've ever played with in astronomy. It's a very simple package. There is no eyepiece. There is no finder for the scope. It incorporates about a five inch mirror in here and it's a reflector scope and it is totally smartphone controlled. You download an app, you power this on, and then you are ready to start playing with it. I mean it's that simple. Uh, it plops down when you're, when you're tearing it apart. You have the tripod, you have the top part right here that goes in and you just clamp it down and it has GPS enabled, you Wi-Fi to the scope. The only disadvantage I've found so far, at least using an Android S9, is when you're Wi-Fi'd up to the scope, your, your mobile data is shut off so you're not live streaming or anything. But I'm told from the company from Unistellar that this is exclusively an Android S9 problem and this is something that uh, future software app update, Android update may fix. I'm told on the iPhone this is not a problem. But it's just kind of fun because you can slew this around. And I've had this out a few times uh, under dark sky sites and I uh, even had a chance to see Comet Neowise with this. And I'll get the optics down here a little bit more so you can see it. You stack images, you get a live view, it gives you a list of what's up tonight. And there's even a plan with this with the company to actually do uh, real-time astronomy like stellar occultations, exoplanet transits. Uh, we were looking at comet Neowise with it. I don't know if you can see it. But where the sensor is, this is kind of like a Celestron fast star. With the sensor and the camera where you're seeing an image up here where you would be seeing an image under a dark sky is right up in here. And it gives you a catalog of recommended what's up tonight. You can do uh, dark frames, display, park. It's a really basic simple uh, app. The most complicated thing I've seen with the app thus far, you can do right ascension declination entry. Uh, it's a little counterintuitive. It took me because to hunt down comets obviously if they're not in the database or if you're looking for something that's uh, you know an asteroid or something that's not in the database you have to uh, punch in the right ascension declination manually. It was a little counterintuitive based uh, versus how you're used to entering in numbers. Uh, it's kind of backwards, but once you do it, uh, it, you understand exactly how it works. The scope even comes with its own backpack. I don't think I've ever seen a scope like that that came with its own backpack. And it breaks down, like I said, into two units. This top part comes off. It's uh, pretty lightweight. I, say it's probably less than 15 pounds total. Um, I, haven't, uh, I don't have the specs right here in front of me, but uh, to tear it down and set it up, I found versus other telescopes, because you don't have to do alignment and you don't have to do polar aligning, you don't have to do focusing on this, it is kind of interesting. But for something that's so advanced, focusing is really, let's see if I can get spun around here, Focusing is something that is as basic, simple as you could imagine. First, we'll show what, what you do. What I like to do is find a bright star, say Arcturus, Vega, you know, any bright star will work. There is a focusing mask on the front here, and this is for fine focusing, but it is, it sounds a little daunting, but it is the simplest thing you can imagine. Find the bright star, once your GPS is aligned and it's in the field of view, put this mask on. Then, and I'll spin it around here a bit so you can see it. You wouldn't be slewing like this, obviously. You would have the star already lined up. It's kind of fun to just play with it, actually, and slew it around. It probably won't let me go down beyond horizontal. All right, right around back here is a giant knob. This focuses the mirror. And when you're looking through there, 
you're going to get a crosshair section of the star. The star will look like a set of crosshairs, but one of the crosshairs of the three won't be quite centered. All you're going to do is take this pushes and pulls the mirror in the back, kind of like a schmidt cassegrain focus. You're going to just turn this knob, look at those crosshairs until it's focused. Once, once all three lines are in the center, you're good to go, and you're focused. So, and to park the scope is as simple as you can park my scope. It'll go back to home position. I'll show you real quick um, what we've been shooting with it. Actually kind of nifty. Here's a very quick screenshot of Comet Neowise that we shot last night. Um, that's not stacked. This saves everything right to your phone. When you're actually shooting stuff, it looks kind of like, here's the Terrafid Nebula under a dark sky sight that I shot. Um, it, it comes off like this after about two or three minutes of imaging, but it's kind of neat to watch the image just built up on it. Dumbbell Nebula, again, I don't know if you can see, but that's, you're getting that view. Probably the most interesting comment I got from people um, looking at this, at, I took it as to a local star party for the Back Bay uh, Amateur Astronomers here in Norfolk on Saturday night. And most people are like, uh, great, where's the eyepiece? And I'm like, there's no eyepiece. I'm like, you look at the phone and you're basically looking at what it's doing on the... So that was kind of an interesting experience for people. I, I think people thought maybe it was something that wasn't quite real. When they were looking at it, I kind of got that vibe from a lot of people, but a lot of people were amazed too that it's like, oh, you can totally control uh, a telescope with your smartphone and do something that's, this really lowers the bar for deep sky imaging. There are objects that would probably have taken me like 10 or 15 minutes to find just star hopping and stuff that I can just dial in right ascension. A friend of mine there at Star Party kind of said, you know, that's kind of cheating that you can just use the GPS and the scope. And I'm amazed go, using GoTo scopes for years how accurate this is. This, and we use the Stellina scope as well. Uh, this is a little faster, I would say, than the Stellina scope. The Stellina scope, I would say the advantages with that was that it was focus on its own and it had a temperature sensor and you didn't have to do those manual things. However, this one, the GPS is up and running. I literally can have this one uh, out of the backpack and running within two or three minutes. There, uh, Stellina, it seemed like you were waiting quite a while for it to do. It was really finicky with its GPS and if the sky wasn't dark enough, it would reset. But that's it. That's, uh, this is the Unistellar EV scope. Um, they run about $3,000 right now. They kickstarted them a few years ago and now they're becoming generally available. Again, not cheap, but um, it, it's a fun. I could see myself using something like this a whole lot more um, than uh, especially being mobile. If you're somebody that needs to just throw something in a car and go, and you don't have an observatory or you're observing, like I said, I'm doing urban observing here in Norfolk and I'm able to do uh, brighter deep sky objects, you know, and even catch things down to 12th, 14th magnitude from a bright urban sky using this. So all in all, it's a neat toy. Uh, thumbs up.